Okay, so I thought it would be good to have a conversation about SEO because there's a lot of companies and businesses and startups um, that need services. Um, and we, of course, offer SEO services, but uh, there is, you know, a group of people who may not be able to outsource and get their own help. So they're kind of doing it, doing it themselves. Yeah, so I thought it would be Been cool there. to have right, a conversation just about SEO and what people can do and um, to do their own SEO and just helping understand because you say SEO and it's a really, really, really mm -hmm. big umbrella, uh, even for me. Um, having done a little bit of SEO. So yeah, I just wanted to talk about that. So I guess my first question for you is how long have you been doing SEO? Um, yeah, yeah, no, I think it's a great topic. Uh, just search engine optimization is like a category and you're right, a lot of people talk about it like it's a specific thing, like deliverable, you know, but um, First of all, your hair looks great, and thanks for putting this together. Right. So, and this is a lot of fun. Uh, so, your question, uh, it was just about how long I've been doing it for. Yeah. Uh, so, I I really would consider I started doing it in college. Uh, I started a nonprofit, so we had a zero dollar budget. So, just had to do everything and just really scrapping and you know hustling to, to make it work. So it was fun, you know, self taught from top to bottom. So. I don't know, junior, sophomore, junior year of college. So I don't know, 10 years or something. So it's been so, a while. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, been a, been a little bit. All right. And under the umbrella of SEO, there's a lot of different branches. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a local, there's SEO, the on-page, technical. Can mm -hmm. you high level just touch on a few of those? Like, for instance, local SEO versus um like on page or maybe i'm not even like segmenting it right for you but yeah, just like touch base yeah. on a few of those because there are differences with like so if people wanted to come to us and they have questions about it it's like a really big question hey do you do seo it's like <laughs> what <laughs> like so i just wanted to try to like make it easy for people to understand the different types at, from a high level yeah yeah absolutely okay. so uh, like I mentioned before, SEO is really just a category. It's a deliverable. It's a type of marketing. Um, just like in anything else, if you're in finance, you have to know how to do different tasks or different skills or, um, you know, with HR, uh, that's like a category or deliverable. So with search engine optimization, uh, the real key is trying to create content that gets found by Google and engages people. So. Google is just a conduit to get content found. So within SEO, there's really three or four buckets, depending on how you look at it. Uh, the first one is technical. That's how does Google see the content, you know, with its algorithm? How does it uh, understand the context, the relevance? How do you stack up against your competitors? So uh, this technical side is really machine read. It's, it's stuff that people really don't see unless you're a coder. So mm. it's the back end, it's schema, mm. um, it's tags that's on your site, it's how fast is your site load, things like that. So that's all stuff that's really more for Google. Um, mm. The second part is the off page, and that's where um, Google considers one major signal is how many people are talking about you. So it's how popular are you at a party? And you can usually tell by how many people at the party are talking about you. So. Um, it sets the same kind of idea where you want other websites, other businesses, news organizations, whatever, social media to point back to your site because that's saying, hey, Google, like they're relevant enough to, to get a backlink. Um, then the third part is on page. Um, that has to do with the actual content that you're writing and putting out there. So from the blog posts to the landing pages, the service pages, uh, that's really where the Google meets humans take place. Um, then the fourth bucket, you mentioned it is local SEO. Mm, yeah. Uh, local SEO, while it is kind of its own beast, mm -hmm. it really is tied to traditional SEO, those three buckets that we talked about before. So um, if you rank well in Google for search terms, you tend to rank well for local, um, for local SEO. Okay. What kind of business would... Uh, 
could take advantage of local SEO versus just traditional. And I know that, like you said, it's tied, mm -hmm. but for instance, like we're not local really. I mean, mm -hmm. we are right, but we have clients everywhere. So is there a specific type of top client that would use local or focus on local SEO versus some of the other? Yeah. Even though I know they're combined, right? Mm -hmm. They're linked. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Um, I think that if, and this is part of the questions that we ask uh, potential clients with onboarding is, you know, what do you sell? What are your goals? Who's your ideal customer? And you begin to see a pattern if you ask these questions and the types of businesses that should focus on local SEO is if they require customers to come to them. So for example, um, you know, a car dealership, right? You can't really buy, I mean, you could buy a car online now with Carvana and these other places, but, uh, traditional brick and mortar. So, okay. uh, you know, sewing shops, they require people to come in and purchase stuff or tax accountants, uh, HVAC, you know, I mean, HVAC, they go out, but it's still within a geographic area. So right. okay. it's really, if, if you want to get qualified leads or if you define a qualified lead by someone based on their geographic area. Okay. Got mm -hmm. it. So like a nail technician, really anyone, pet services, mm -hmm. you know, any type of thing like that, like you mentioned, yeah. like HVAC or lawn care or hairstylist, mm -hmm. anything like that. Okay. But the, on the flip side, the type of business that doesn't need it, and I think it's important to define that kind of business, it would be like, um, you know, MarthaStewart.com. Like they don't need it because local SEO, they don't need, yeah, they don't need local SEO. They oh. definitely need traditional. Um, and we work with a couple of big clients that rely on national presence instead of just hyper local presence. So if you're a car dealer, for example, the reason you need local SEO is because a qualified lead is not someone who lives, you know, 4,000 miles away because they can't come by your car. Um, but your qualified lead is someone who lives within a hundred miles or whatever, you know, cause they'll drive to pick it up. So, um, you know, ESPN.com, that's a site that doesn't need local SEO. <laughs> Got it. It's just right. not what it's doing. So. Right. Okay. That makes sense. All right. So something I hear still often, and I've heard it for years is content is king. Mm -hmm. Um, would you still agree with that? And how big of a role does content play in SEO? Yeah. And traditional, right? I'm not, I'm going to try to separate it. Cause I feel like in my head, correct me if I'm wrong, like, I feel like local, the strategy is a little bit different from traditional, mm -hmm. um, but yeah. traditionally well, with content. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess just a clarifying question. So I don't really like whatever people say content is, is king. It's kind of like you go to church and it's like Jesus in the Bible. And it's like, okay, so what does that mean? <laughs> like, can you explain? Like, that's the right answer. No one can, okay, Jesus in the Bible. Like, but that can't be the answer. That's why I'm not really a big fan of the content is king principle, even mm -hmm. though we make content, mm -hmm. I just think it, it's vague and it bypasses the nuances that really make it important for people who are looking for answers. Mm. So, you know, it's like, how do I be a, a good person? Jesus. Like, well, that's not really an answer. Right. You know? Or okay. how can I be good at SEO? Just make more content. It's like, bro, like, there's so much don't do goes. that. Like that, you know, that's like hustle porn kind of thing. And like, I'm not, big fan on that you know you like so, stuff that where people can go and take action yeah because yeah. again content is just a category like it's just you have video you have mm. you know music you have written blog posts you mm. have instagram which is different than linkedin and each one of those are require are part of seo but the way that you make a video is a lot different than how you write a blog post and stuff and they they both have different values for different types of uh, businesses, you know? Gotcha. All right. So say, you know, there's someone who's looking to start a website or a blog or they're a small business, right? They're kind of starting. It's just them. They're doing it from their own money. They don't have any big investors. They're really, it's homegrown. So they know that they need SEO. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, high level, like, 
what are some good places to start? Because again, I'm thinking of the folks that can't necessarily hire someone okay. yet. Yeah. So, and I know that's a big question, but I think that's what people would look for. Like, what can I start? What's a good foundation for me to start thinking about SEO? So, I uh, just to uh, expand and I know on that's that. A big question. <laughs> no, it's fine. I mean, it's fine. I think that's where a lot of people start from. Uh, so one of the first steps before you jump into seo or any kind of marketing because you do have to invest your time and money so whether it's your own time or your own money for setting things up uh, i would say you know start asking yourself some basic questions and i'll ask you these questions so what product is this person selling or service are they i mean you just make some up shoes 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 cool okay so fashion Fashion, yeah. Are they an online store or are they like a local shoe boutique? Online. Okay. For now. For now. I like making up stores. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, Ooh. Ugh, I should have only asked questions. <laughs> <the> <laughs> um. I don't know about that one. Well, let's uh, let's edit that because I don't know the answers. <laughs> I was. <laughs> um, That's fine. We can edit that out. Um, what about, you know, someone who... Uh, no, you uh, know what? Let's just go with it. Uh, I, sh I shouldn't do that. I was just trying to pick the easy way out. So they're... So I'll start over then and say, because you were saying, yeah. like, what type of business? Yeah, what type so, of business? All right. So shoe business. Okay. So they're selling shoes. Do they rely on foot traffic to their store or online? They're trying to do it online only okay. for right now i think that's fine because it seems more feasible okay like an easier to start up less right overhead costs mm -hmm. for them yeah uh what kind of shoe like what kind of shoes are they selling or what market are they going for are they trying to be a pay less are they trying to be a boutique are they doing they're boutique you know, they're custom shoes they're custom shoes custom shoes i don't even know if people that do this I, yeah i mean they custom do they shoes. you know there's custom shoes for different uh types of walking you know that's true and you have big feet and so mm -hmm. i feel like i used to have to go to east bay I right to go to the the catalog so, <laughs> i had like 15 pairs of shoes to choose from oh <laughs> man so yeah i mean Most i feel like Velcro. if you start yeah if you start Best getting into shoes. your your sizes for instance mm -hmm. right you're going over 16 17 18 in size yeah some of that is hard to find my cute shoes so this is a so it's a it's a custom shoe place that sells i'm making this up on the spot that sells custom shoes for women that wear sizes over like their foot sizes over size 10. cool so beautiful women who don't have uh you they know traditional nice model of uh foot size yeah, yeah. i think yeah. that's fine and, and i think there's always a need for that you know i think um yeah you know whenever especially whenever it has to do with fashion and stuff, you definitely have an opportunity for diving into self-worth and um, value mm. and things like that. Because, you know, I got big feet, but I don't know, people make fun of me, so I can't. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so they're a shoe dealer, mm -hmm. uh, specialized in large feet for women. For women. Uh, where are they located at? Like where, I mean, where's their warehouse or how are they distributing or what's that? Um, they're based out of Miami. I'm making mm. this up. Yeah, go Dolphins, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, uh, so they're based out of Miami. Uh, cool. So what I would do is I would first start with uh, competitive research. I think it's really important to understand what does the market look like because that's going to tell you if you should flex towards regional or if you should flex towards more like a national brand. Um, the national, the, the wider your net goes, the more it's going, the more fuel it's going to take to try to fuel that, you know, SEO strategy or online strategy. So typically what you always want to do, whether you're doing, you know, PPC or you're doing SEO, what I've found is always kind of starting smaller geo, uh, but then testing the waters and see where does that, you know, where does that go? So what I would say is, uh, let's just say that we're only trying to target people in Miami or Florida or Florida. something, you know. Um, what I would say is really lean into being local, being mom and pa store or whatever, you know, the term is being boutique. Um, so I would start by setting up a couple of pages, homepage, obviously, uh, that one would have to really gear towards, uh, with great conversion rate optimization, like the writing and stuff, make it really engaging for people with women with big feet. Um, and from an SEO standpoint, you really want to focus on 
the problems that women with big feet have. So you make an instant connection so that they don't have to go and guess, should I go here? Do they know what I want? Do, does this place know what I want? You want to be the sole place that understands the problems that women with big feet have. So when they go there, they're like, oh, they understand yeah. the challenges Thank goodness. I have <laughs> yeah, exactly. with finding shoes. Yeah, yeah. No, okay. more, no more, you know, stop the, stop the journey, find the shoes you need, look beautiful, feel beautiful, right. you know, all that good stuff. So we're not even getting into trying to be too technical. You're just like, let's connect with mm -hmm. the customer yeah. first. Well, yeah, it's like the customer pays you. Like, it's great to get found in Google, but... To be frank, like I used to chase chase the numbers, you know, like how many hits did we get, how many sessions, but you realize that instead of 10,000 people on my site, I really just want like 10 or 15 highly, highly qualified so they buy from me mm. because, you know, Google gets you the traffic, but people are the ones that pay you. So you always want to okay. start back, start from the your goal and then work backwards. And that's kind of the methodology that I go through is okay. you know, understanding the competition, understanding the market, understanding your target audience. So um, the next thing, since they're an e-commerce store, uh, always focus on the category pages. Uh, that's a really technical term. Well, yeah, I was like, what does that yeah, mean? We could, we'll put a link or something for, for more info, but yeah, just like a idea. really 5,000 foot view. Uh, within the hierarchy of a site and the way that Google, Google's little bot goes doo -bee -doo -bee -doo -bee across the site, it sees uh, the home page and then it runs down all the other pages in your site. First. Home first. page first. Is that always the case? Sorry. I don't From know. what I found, I actually, okay. I honestly don't know. No, that's fine. I'm question. like, sorry, I just jumped yeah, in. There's I'm a like, lot. Wait. No, that's fine. There's a lot of stuff that I don't know. Okay. But, you know, I first want to tell you, I don't know what page it starts from. That'd be cool, but I've never ran into that. But, no, no. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, so... Let's just say it starts from the home page okay. and then it goes to your products page. And then on your products page, you have uh, large, large boots, you have large shoes and large sandals. Or yeah. Something. Or by color Whatever. or something. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that's a, yeah, to your point, there's a lot of ways to segment that out. Okay. Uh, but that would be the category page because it would be boots. And then within the boots page, you are organizing all of your boots. Okay. Right? So your category page is kind of like on a family tree like one node on a family tree Got as it. you go. So okay. um, I've always found that if you're limited time, limited money, always focus on the category page first if you're an e-commerce store, just because that provides Google the most relevance and the most context like in the content. So you could really build it out. Okay. Do you feel like if you're focused on e-commerce, that's more important than even the homepage or they're really close? Because home pages, what you, mm, I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't make those guess. Do they, that's a hard generalization to make in terms of traffic, but. In in most cases, your home page, I mean, your home page is your most powerful page on your site and you really don't want it not to be because oh, okay. of the structure. Okay. At least that's, that's what I was so getting I've to, but then I'm like, maybe I shouldn't like try to no, say it's, that. I mean, it's fine. Okay. I mean, people like. From what I've seen, stuff. right? Yeah. From some people's analytics, mm -hmm. it's always the home page. From what I've seen, mm -hmm. and I've seen the same thing. Okay. Except sometimes with very seasonal customers, like furnace repair, um, they might you might see during the, the winter is like blog posts are really high up there. You okay. Know, because people are asking specific questions. Okay, so, that makes sense. Which is another part of SEO between the technical <laughs> and content, but we'll. I didn't know we were going to go in e-commerce SEO no. directions. <laughs> oh, no, my example. No, it's fine. No, it's great. <laughs> we might have to have a part two of this because yeah. I, I feel like there's a lot of good nuggets here. Yeah. Um, you know, we throw visuals up or something. But um, anyways, you just always want to, it's kind of like Plinko machine, right? Isn't that the one where you drop the ball and go boop, 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 boop. I don't know, but that sounds right. Yeah, the price is right thing. Like, is it called Plinko? Yeah, then uh, no. Red Letter Media did the same I thing. I always learn new things from you. Like, I, I would never need to know that, but yeah. now I do. Well, we gotta check it. The price is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make sure it's called Plinko. Uh, that was funny. Yeah. But no, keep going. <laughs> oh yeah. Just, rabbit hole. What a good show, right? Like Wikipedia <laughs> rabbit hole. Um, but yeah, you just wanna. <laughs> Uh, your homepage, you want to develop that if you're doing e-commerce, uh, assuming that people are good, getting there. This is informal. We're just, oh does that gosh. hurt? I'm sorry. No, I think it was rice from Lincoln this morning. <laughs> it's something like, on your finger. food. Or I've been working out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Candy hands. <laughs> <laughs> I 
pay. <laughs> uh, so your homepage, you always want to assume people are getting there from referrals or direct traffic. So um, just anywhere from the web. So that's where your homepage, you really want that to be about the customer, okay. um, about their needs. You don't really need to rank a homepage because mm. it's kind of going to rank itself. Got you're, it. You know, Okay. Uh, but you know, depending on what SERPs look like, the search engine results look like. But anyways, um, the category pages is where I've seen the biggest bang for the buck, whether you're a small e-commerce uh, e store or a big one, just because uh, customers are looking for specific things. So you could start to change those pages and massage them on seasonality, um, you know, winter boots versus uh, sandals in the spring different fashions, um, and also in the category is where you tend to have your product feed or, you know, like different types of boots that you have, right? So um, the, the product pages are where you could really start optimizing for technical terms, for SKU numbers, or some other um, identifier. If there's people who often ask like to your sales team, um, you know, product numbers, things like that. So. Usually the, the home page and other pages on your site are more um, top level to try to build trust. The category page, you can assume anyone who's on the category page is looking for that type of shoe in our example, or boot. So you really wanna talk about seasonality um, and start um, inching them towards the purchase that they need and providing the content that the, the, the customers need. And then the product page, that's where you're really trying to uh, rank for the specific product type or the make and model or anything like that. So, so it's like the individual, like the product page is like the individual page. So if you click after you look on the mm -hmm. category page and you see there's 50 types of shoes, and mm -hmm. but I want to select this red sandal, mm -hmm. that's the product page. Yeah. The individual yeah. Exactly. item page. Where okay. you'd actually buy it from. Okay. Yeah. All right. And so that's one you really want to focus on as well. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so that's where I would start is really build out the, the category page first uh, and then the product page has to be there um, to facilitate the purchase and then also to build trust. Um, so usually having um, icons or, or little badges and things like that right by the buy, buy now button to help overcome any kind of um, objections to making the purchase or any doubt. So. I know I don't want to go on a rabbit like down a rabbit hole, but for like the icons you would add, do they need to be linked anywhere, or is it just like an image? Fine? No. Yeah, that's a good question. So, on this page, on a product page, you want to have no links. Oh. Like you just want buy now. Like the every every page on a website has a job, and the job of the product page is to get people to buy. So. Oh. Typically, you don't want to have links that will drive people away from the purchase because by the time they get to the product page, you want them to have already found what they need and trust you, and then they're ready to purchase. So, um, the the icons I would typically just put, you know, fast shipping or PayPal safe or whatever it is, you know, something where it helps to uh, make the customer potential buyer more um, confident in making the purchase. So, okay. You know, so you mentioned the home page, the category page, and the product page. Mm -hmm. And then I think when we first started talking, you mentioned just like four or five pages. So what mm -hmm. would those other one or two pages be? Uh, the first one I'd say about us uh, or about the company, this is really to build trust. Um, and this is probably going to be the page that you'd want to link to if it's, hey, you know, we're a local business or mm -hmm. we've had this problem as well. You know, how did it get started? Why did it get started? Um, because when you're selling these shoes, you know, your competition is, you know, Payless Shoes or the Amazons of the world where people go to Amazon for the lowest price. You know, in this example, the shoe company probably not going to have the lowest price. So you want to have either faster shipping or better customer service. Um, and that's where there's still a lot of opportunity for niche products out there. Um, you know, the world isn't, or the, the sky's not falling with Amazon, like taking over every category, like mm. you're still able to outrank Amazon and, and Walmart, you know, if you know what you're doing, especially that's why I say start regional, um, just because if you try to do all of the US, then you're naturally taking over or competing against more people. So that's where it takes more money, more effort. Okay. 
So homepage, category, product, about us. Mm -hmm. And then finally, I'd say um, for you know having creating blog posts, that would be a big a one. Blog. Mm -hmm. blog posts. Yeah. What about a contact us? Does that matter? Yeah. Or not necessarily. Oh, that's important if you're trying to rank for SEO. You Is wanna, it? Okay. Uh, you want to have nap name, address, and phone number on every page and then your contact us page is more for questions and things like that for follow-up so okay. yeah contact us is one of the, the, the key pages okay. you should have so thank you for reminding me no no, no <laughs> i just want to make i just want to make sure i understand i know it's always changing mm -hmm. so you also mentioned a blog mm -hmm. so you know having blog content and that's something that people could add later right because i mean creating a blog takes a lot right mm -hmm. you have to, it's a lot of writing yeah. Is that something that you would suggest starting with? You know, for instance, say someone has like everything ready, but they don't have a blog. Would you say, hey, just get started? Or would you say, wait on that blog? Yeah, I mean. Or it just depends. I mean, it's kind of like personal. The, the way that I approach it is, and we're just talking about SEO, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. If in our, our example is for women with big feet, <laughs> In Miami, what I would say is uh, maybe not start on blog right away. Start on Instagram or Pinterest or something where women with it, women tend to go to. Mm -hmm. And then if you could find a place where women with big feet go to, those are great places to, to start out with. Okay. So um, really the blogging is just to supply you content to answer questions that customers have to build authority with them. Um, it's also to get found whenever people ask for specific questions in Google you want to get found. Uh, but you know, that's kind of a slow burn. I mean, that's going to take several months mm. to, to build up and even see anything, okay. you know? Um, so it is, SEO is a long game, but in the sense that you can make blog posts and then maybe post them on Instagram or, or build something around that okay. um, or Pinterest. But yeah, I think if we were doing whim of big feet shoe store, then Instagram or something like that okay. would be good. Okay. And without going like too crazy, like I know once you get this stuff set up, you want to track it. And I know sometimes with like WordPress, right? There's like basic metrics depending on what platform you use or like plugins or whatever. Um, would you say every site would definitely need a, in addition to like what Squarespace or Wix might provide, they definitely should set up analytics as well. Google analytics. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and you know, that, that's, one of the most important things because if you're doing it yourself, a lot of times, and I've been in the same boat, you're trying to do everything and mm -hmm. you're just like, oh, maybe I should do this, maybe I should do that, you know? Right. The analytics are gonna tell you what's working and what's not. Okay. Um, Beyond and, what, like the bait, again, like I know some of the platforms supply you like how many people yeah. have visited pages, but Google Analytics goes a little bit deeper, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And, you know, at that point, if you wanted to track sales and things like that and set up goals, that's where you might need a someone who knows what they're doing because you don't want to set it up improperly because it might give you the wrong data. Mm. So that's where it might be good to spend 150 bucks is to have someone set up goals and e-commerce tracking mm. for your site. Okay. You know, um, that's actually a really good point. So it's like, hey, you can build off the site, but you've done all this hard work, you want to make mm -hmm. sure everything is yeah. tracked properly, you want to know what people are doing when they get there to ensure that it's accurate, mm -hmm. spend a couple hundred bucks, mm -hmm. and then add, you know, have someone set up the tracking for you so you know. That's yeah. a good, that, I mean, that's a good idea because it's like you don't want to set up this whole thing mm -hmm. and then you're like, I don't know what people are doing. Yeah. Or I know how many people come, but that's it. I don't, I can't take action on that. Mm -hmm. that's and that's, good. I think hiring for that analytics for the average person who is probably has these questions that we're talking about it's kind of like bringing you know i would never recommend changing like i, I don't change my own brakes on my car just because that's pretty specialized i can change my oil you know i mean you start to see signs but like you need your brakes to work when you need them and yeah. analytics is essentially the same thing okay like, it's not a slow oh there's like a mistake and i don't need to fix it right now but like you know your analytics if you want to uh allocate your time and resources properly, then that's something you need to have working. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, I think that's really helpful. I mean, as a high level, um, would love to hear, you know, our viewers uh, feedback on that. But I think for a small business, someone just it, with COVID, right, mm -hmm. going on, a lot of small businesses always, but a lot of, a lot of things, 
a lot of people starting their own businesses and so mm -hmm. i feel like this i feel like this will be really helpful for you know i've seen like realtors starting clothing shops you know people who are selling food so i think this was a really good discussion just summarizing the differences between seo what falls under that bucket and if i'm starting myself from the ground up with like no additional support where you know using the example of shoes the best places to start and focus on so that would be really helpful Good. so um i'm excited for our next video not sure what the topic is gonna be but maybe ppc or maybe we dive more into seo so i don't know we'll find yeah. out when we we covered a lot of different subjects today so even <laughs> if we you know, job. use that example just keep going you know and yeah it's That's fun true. it's fun to talk about it so. yeah i agree this so, is a great idea thank you yeah. okay